This video is made available by the Technology and Applied Design Program at Berea College under a Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike version 3.0 license. So here we are. We have our Arduino. And we'd like to use it for input. So we plug a wire into pin 3 and we ask digital read. What do we get? We could get high, we could get low, that is 0 or 1. And we don't know because the pin is floating. That means that is neither guaranteed to be positive voltage nor is it guaranteed to be grounded. Uh, that's because our wire is connected to nothing. Now remember, we're using pin 3 as an input. Floating inputs are bad, right? As students of electronics and computing, we would like to have inputs that have a known value always. So let's bring out another part. Here we are. Uh, good, good. We've brought out a button. And we'll move that down there just a little bit so there's some more room. So now, hmm. Uh, what am I looking for? I'm looking for something. Never mind. Um, we throw another wire in. We now have a switch. If we push the switch, that is, we close the circuit, it's still floating. Right? Just because we threw a switch in here does not mean that we don't have a floating circuit. So that is still bad, right? So we go from here through the switch, follow this wire to the pin, and sure enough, nowhere are we guaranteed to be five volts or ground. All right, let's see what we can do here. We're going to add something more to our circuit we could connect to five volts. This way, we could connect that to ground. All right, but we need some more things here now. We're gonna add a ground wire. And uh, for sanity, I'm gonna make the ground wires black. So then we'll connect both sides of our breadboard. And over here, we'll run five volts to the red rail. Here we go. And for sanity, we'll make our five volt lines red. Okay, there we go. So now I could say, ooh, look, um, if I don't push the button, that is the switch is open, I've got a connection straight through to five volts. Well, there's a problem with that. That's actually, um, I'm shorting straight to five volts and with no resistance. So that means that I'm getting a very large amount of current potentially into my Arduino. And we don't want that. We want our Arduino to live a long, happy life. So we should probably put a resistor in here. This way, we can limit the amount of current that flows from our 5 volt source through to the pin. Uh, playing with the wire. Let's add our button back in. So now. I'm going to change the value of that resistor. So I select it and I wander off the screen. I'm going to tell that to be a 10K. Um, there's actually a mathematical relationship between the input pin and the resistor. I'm not going to go into that at this point. 10 to 100K is typical for current limiting resistors in pull up situations with microcontrollers like the Arduino. It has to do with impedance, which is a topic we haven't discussed yet. What I'm doing here is I'm going back to Ohm's law. V equals IR. I know that I've got a 5 volt input. I've got a 10,000 ohm resistor. So if I put 5 over 10k, do, 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 that's going to be 0.5 milliamps. That's a tiny amount of current and we have at that point gotten well well underneath the uh, the limits of, of what the Arduino can handle so we say okay how do I know I've read the documentation for the Arduino and it tells me how much current it can handle as input so let's look at this circuit now we have a switch which we can push Ooh, so when we push it we connect from ground through the switch through our resistor and we provide a nice grounded connection to pin 3 and we actually here in this case we're shorting our um, our voltage source straight through to ground that is something maybe we want to think about 
Um, it's possible we want a small resistor somewhere on the other side of the switch. But the important thing is actually is that when the switch is open, we now have a good connection to 5 volts. And when it is closed, we have a good connection to ground. And this is a pull-up resistor. You can find a number of web pages about pull-up resistors. I think Bit101 has a, a nice article on it as well, which I'll point to you to in the description of the video. So we get a value of 1 or true, or 5 volts, when the switch is open, that is, when we have not pressed it. We get a reading of 0 or false, or 0 volts, when the switch is pressed. And hopefully that helps as a further explanation of pull-up resistors. Right there. There it is. And that's it. I am out of here.